All right, let's take a look at ease of access settings. There are some very useful settings in here. Narrator can be used to read elements of text on the screen. So you could even use this in maybe Microsoft Edge to have it read an entire article to you, read an email to you. So that might be good for someone who is multitasking. It's mainly here to help out the blind. And then there's Magnifier, which just makes it easier to see things on the screen, as you can see here. With Magnifier on, you can also set a few other settings. So even if you set the display back to 100%, you could have it invert colors, you could have it start the magnifier automatically, you could have it follow the keyboard or mouse as well if you do have it zoomed in. High contrast just makes it easier to see everything throughout the entire OS. Closed captions enables you to update the look of closed caption uh, throughout the operating system. Really, this is going to be used in video applications like the new movies and TV app. In keyboard, you can turn on the on-screen keyboard. So this just opens up in a window here. You have sticky keys, which essentially enables you to enable shortcuts with just the press of one key. So rather than pressing Control C or something like that, you could set it to just pressing and holding the C key and that would enable that shortcut. With this feature, you can enable a tone to play when you toggle a certain key on, like for instance, caps lock. That, so that's the tone that you would hear. Now we'll get into the mouse settings. So I like to use a black mouse. I just think it looks a little bit more modern, but there are a couple of other options. By default, you'll be using the white color. Uh, then you also have this option here, which makes it easy to see the mouse no matter what. So it just changes it to the negative of whatever color you're currently hovering over. So that's pretty interesting. Then you can also change the size of the cursor. So you can make it a lot larger if you'd like to be able to see that a little bit more easily. Now, if you do have a number pad or a numeric keypad on your keyboard, you can actually enable this feature and that will allow you to use the arrows in the numeric keypad to move the mouse cursor around the screen. So this might be useful if maybe your mouse dies and you need to be able to navigate the OS. If you could somehow get into settings here and enable that, then you'd be able to go ahead and move your cursor around the screen. So inside of other options, there are a few very interesting features here. So normally when you're navigating the OS, you're going to see animations when you go through different places. So you can see here, there are no longer animations. The operating system just kind of jumps to the new menu. So that saves time. It also saves a little bit of processing power. So you can turn that off if you don't want to see the animations. I happen to like the animation, so I'll turn those back on. You can turn off the background. So if I turn this off, you're just going to see a black screen there. You can also change the amount of time that notifications appear for. So when a notification appears in the bottom right hand corner, by default, it will stay there for 10 seconds unless you interact with it. So you can have it display for a little bit longer if you'd like, if you'd like to have a little bit more time to interact. The cursor thickness just changes the actual look of the cursor. If you make it too thick, it's going to be covering over your text. So you probably want to keep that down to one, two, or maybe, maybe three at the max. So this is an interesting feature. It's probably meant for the deaf. So basically, normally when there's a notification sound that plays, there's, you know, simply a sound. Sometimes there may be a pop-up that also shows up on the screen. But for those that can't hear and want to be able to see whenever there's a notification, they can turn this on. So it will either flash the title bar of the active application, or you can have it flash the window, or you can have it flash the entire display. Essentially what that does is it turns the display to a negative of whatever it's showing currently for a brief moment. For those of you using a touch screen, you may want to see visual feedback. Essentially what that does is when you touch the screen, there's going to be a visual indication of that underneath your finger or underneath the stylus. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. I'm going to have to switch displays. All right. So with the show visual feedback, when I touch the screen on, you'll see this visual cue whenever I touch the screen. If I drag my finger around the screen, there's a little bit of a trail. 
And then if you turn on and use larger, darker visual feedback, it'll be very apparent where you're touching the screen. So if you're using this for a presentation, it will be much easier for people to see what you're doing. So this might be really great for an app developer who wants to demonstrate their application. That's it for ease of access. Thanks for watching.